well. When I was admitted into the university, during my selection of my courses in the, after I finished my Form 4, I chose agriculture because I knew agriculture is the backbone of a country, Kenya. Yet I knew I would make money doing agriculture and also I needed to uplift the livelihood of the people that were surrounding me. And I've been brought up in an agricultural environment. Agriculture is one, one field whereby everybody can do it with just a little knowledge. You don't require to be a technical person to earn some money from agriculture. So by having groups of people, I train them and then they can, I see them getting to educate their children and being able to put a plate of food on their table. That really excites me. And I have done several of these and I'm happy to say that I can pride myself that I have seen people do things and educate their children and even people emulate what I do and they're coming on board to do agriculture with me. The biggest mistake I find poultry farmers making in the field where I do is choosing a breed of bird because doing a business of poultry because they they saw their neighbor do it, not understanding the purpose or why they are doing the farming. Most of the farmers make a mistake that they look at their neighbor, what their neighbor is doing, and the next day they are starting the business, they do not consult, they do not do any research, and then they do everything wrong. Because we try to copy, and farming, you can't copy farming, you need to an expertise to help you. And we are always there, they should always come to us. Okay, pottery, uh, there's, there's a notion in this country that there are eggs coming from Uganda. But we have always, ex they have always received eggs from Uganda. What I need farmers to understand that whenever you are setting your pottery farming, you should be focused and look at the better timing. During the times of, of scarcity, that's the time when you, sh you should be have, having your peak of your birds. Like, but during the times of plenty, everybody has chickens being fed well, everybody has eggs, so the majority of the people are having eggs and these eggs coming from neighboring countries and the eggs flood. So it's always good during the times of plenty, start your poultry farm that time that by the time the six months are reaching at the times of scarcity you'll be able to sell like now the people who have eggs at this time of the month the month of may they are harvesting good money because they started in the month of october september when everybody was saying that the eggs are flooded by, so if now you are selling your eggs at this particular time, you have a say. But if you start your eggs today, your chickens today, it means that you're going to have eggs in the month of December and you'll be in a time of plenty. There will be rains, so there will be enough greens, there will be rains, there will be enough uh, grain, so all the birds will be having enough food and the production is going to be high. So everybody will have eggs and everybody will be in the market. So what happens? The supply is more, the demand is less, so the price goes down. So time your time, actually start your, start your cheeks during the time of plenty that you can sell during the time of scarcity. My ideal farm would be a farm that has a quarter acre of land would, have, would, would contain about, if properly managed and properly planned, would have basically up to 20,000 birds. So I'll build sheds that will, I'll make sure that I have uh, houses that have storage and then I would not make a single roof house, I would make at least one, 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 one floor that I can uh, accommodate as much birds as possible. 
I should also have a store whereby my feed is going to be stored. I should have good supply of water and clean water. I should also consider my workers. I do not want them to walk 100 kilometers to come and work for me. I'd make them a shed. I'd make for them a kitchen. I'd make also a, a feed mill whereby I would, make, I would manufacture my own feeds, having, knowing that I have the expertise to do that. You can start making your own feed as long as you have a hundred bags and hundred bags and above. Because we assume, we, we normally calculate that a hundred bags are going to consume about 15 kgs per day. So in 30 days they will have taken 450 kgs, roughly seven, seven, seven bags, that's a half a ton. And most of the formulas that you have comes as a tonnage. So you can just divide the total, divide by two and mix but at that level you just need to do it manually or you can buy a drum and roll your feed until when you go to levels of a hundred, 500, a thousand more than that because you will grow and then you can be able to buy the meal and buy the mixer whereby you can technically do the, the, the electrical mixing. It is a, it's been my dream that the poultry farmers will one day come together, form a cooperative, like the dairy industry. The dairy industry, we have one person having one cow, taking just one liter of milk, and they are able to pick a bag of dairy meal at a subsidized cost. Why can the, dairy, can the poultry farmers do that? We register ourselves as a group, make ourselves as a cooperative, whereby we manufacture our own feeds and subsidize them for the, the, the farmers that we have. After the farmers, then those farmers will be bringing the eggs to us and we can market for them the eggs. It is my dream that one time in this country of ours, our farmers will come together because there's, there's one, one area in this field that is not united, is the poultry farmers. Because you have your 20 trays of eggs, you go to the market and sell. But if you come together, we can also control the price of the egg. Because you don't know how much I'm selling my eggs today. I may be selling at 10 shillings, another person may be selling at 2 shillings, another person may be selling at 6 shillings. Why do you have all those differences? Because we are not united. Portrait farmers, what I would advise is that we have a registration, we come together, form a, a union or a cooperative whereby we will make our own feeds, subsidize the feeds, buy eggs and then we can have something like a dairy cooperative we can call it a copper a pottery cooperative and that way we can be able to do because you can only be able to manufacture your feed your own feed if you have 500 to a thousand or more birds technically the other farmers are not benefiting from this uh, once you manufacture your feed the maximum number of days that you can keep it with proper aeration is 35 days. Otherwise, after 35 days, the food starts to cake. And when it cakes, there's formation of mycotoxin, which is toxic to your birds. I see a lot of growth and a lot of advancement. We have improved breeds. We have our Kienyeji bird having been improved. We have new breeds that are laying well. So I see and I see in people and, and the fact that we'll have cooperatives for our poultry farmers, I see us doing better business and even overtaking the dairy industry. Well, I'd advise a student taking this course is that Listen carefully and take notes all on the course. It's a nutrition course and practice what I've given you and you will definitely get the profit. And don't rush to sell your eggs. An egg can stay as fresh. Sell by date for an egg is 21 days, expired date is 35 days. So don't rush. Wait for good market and go out and look for your market for the eggs. Don't wait for the brokers who come to the gate look for market, be aggressive and look for the market and let's practice poultry farming. If you do this course and
take notes of what I have trained you and remember to practice what well. it's good to practice okay don't just take the knowledge I have the knowledge now to train you to be a good pottery farmer but it's one thing to learn but there's better experience when you do it practically you learn a lot you observe the bird when it's on the floor you get excited and you're going to do marvelous if you do the practical work practical practicals do much better than theoretical work Pottery farmers that I know, I've listened to, I have experienced with, many of them have said even with one bird. If you have one bird and a cock, the bird is going to lay the eggs. After 12 days, the bird is going to go broody. It's going to give you the 12 chicks. You will have 13 birds. So you can start with those 13, grow them, and then the 13 are going to be, maybe five are going to be cocks, and then seven are going to be females, they are going to go broody, you will have another 12, 84. By the time you are talking of six months, you have a hundred birds. So it's not that you cannot start, you can start as little as just a cock and a hen and you are good to go. Well, when we started this course, I said I'm a trained nutritionist. And currently, I'm manufacturing feeds under the name Granko Feeds and Nutrition. You can hear that I have put the word nutrition because I am a specialist in nutrition. I do feeds for all types of animals, poultry, dairy, pigs, any animal I do formulate feeds for. And I also do customized feeds. If you tell me the locality under which you are, I'll give you feed for that area. Because what we are lacking in Kenya is local, localized feed. Because what is available in the Muru is not what's available for Thika. What's available in Kiambu is not what's available in Nyeri. So I am doing localized and customized feed. You come to me, you tell me what you want me to make for you, I'll give you the, the correct formula for that and we will work together for the, for the betterment of your flock of pottery or pigs or dairy. Many people are starting their own companies and they just mix anything and they come up with a feed. So farmers, it's very important for you to buy a feed that you know is coming from where, can you ask a question or even whenever you buy a feed that you're not sure of, Make a point of going to any curry that is near you, have it analyzed, know what you're buying. Don't just buy anything and feed it to your animals. But we are lobbying under many areas as experts that we have feed standardized. Maybe sooner or later we'll have quality feeds for birds. But be assured that you, when you come to Grand Coffee and Nutrition, you are the right place. You'll never go wrong with us. I also do raw materials selling. And the raw materials that I said I sell, I sell only analyzed raw materials. Any bus that comes to my farm or my factory has to be analyzed. I know the content. So when you buy from me sunflower, I will give you the crude protein, the digestible protein. And then you can go home and practice what I already taught you. So if you buy from me, you will buy a fully analyzed and reported food. I also do customer formulations if you come with your own formula i will correct it for you because what farmers have they gather formulas from their neighbors and they think that it's useful for them if you come to me i will tell you this is not going to help you because your area requires this and this and this so learn to work with expertise and you never go wrong thank you for listening to my course and thank you for taking this course I hope to hear from you as you ask me many questions and welcome on board to the Pottery Farming. Thank you.